Hi all, welcome back to C++ tutorial on Tooth Fulcrum. This session is on inline functions. So what an inline function is, how to use an inline function, the syntax for the same, everything was discussed in the previous session. So here today we are going to discuss about the advantages and disadvantages of using inline functions and also about the inline function and classes in C++ programming language. So what are the advantages of inline functions? Inline functions are mainly used to remove the function called overhead. It also saves the overhead of push or pop variables on the stack when function is called and also saves the overhead of a return call from a function. When you inline a function, you may enable compiler to perform context specific optimization on the body of function. Such optimizations are not possible for normal function calls. Other optimizations can be obtained by considering the flows of calling context and the called context. Inline functions may be useful if it is small for embedded systems because inline can yield less code than the function called preamble and return. Inline function disadvantages. The added variables from the inline function consumes additional registers. That is, after inlining function, if variables number which are going to use register increases, then they may create overhead on register variable resource utilization. That is, when inline function body is substituted at the point of function call, total number of variables used by the function also gets inserted. So, the number of register that is going to be used for the variables will also get increased. So if after function inlining, variable numbers increase drastically, then it would surely cause an overhead on register utilization. If you use too many inline functions, then the size of the binary executable file will be large because of the duplication of same code. Too much inlining can also reduce your instruction cache hit rate thus reducing the speed of instruction fetch from the cache memory to that of the primary memory. Inline function may increase the compile time overhead. If someone changes the code inside the inline function, then all the calling location has to be recompiled because the compiler would require to replace all the code once again to reflect the changes. Otherwise, it will continue with old functionality. Inline functions might cause thrashing because inlining might increase the size of the binary executable file. Thrashing in memory causes performance of computer to degrade. Inline functions and classes. It's also possible to define the inline function inside the class. In fact, all the functions defined inside the class are implicitly inline. Thus, all the restrictions of inline functions are also applied here. If you need to explicitly declare inline function in the class, then just declare the function inside the class and define it outside the class using the inline keyword. For example, let's say we have a class tooth fulcrum. And we have a member function white calculate square and which is working with an argument of type integer. So keep the declaration of the function within the class and definition you can provide it outside of the class. So when you define the function, you can prefix with a keyword inline so that the function works as an inline function. So how do you declare a member function outside of your class? So when you define a member function outside of the class, the syntax for the same was discussed in our sessions. I'm repeating, you say the return type of the function, then the class name, the scope resolution operator, followed by the function name and arguments to the function if any. So if this function has to work 
as an inline function then prefix the same with the keyword inline so an appropriate use of inline function can provide performance enhancement but if inline functions are used arbitrarily then they can't provide better result in other words don't expect better performance of program don't make every function inline it's better to keep inline functions as small as possible so this is about the advantages disadvantages of inline functions and about the inline functions and classes the next session we'll talk about the comparison between a macro and an inline function so keep watching thank you so much please do watch like share comment and subscribe and please don't forget to tap the bell icon you'll get notified whenever we upload a new videos thank you